Dauntless Trials are a waste of time. I'm not trying to discourage you from playing them with that statement, but here's what I mean. Some of you may have looked at the recent video, and the thumbnail says one hour of Emberman Trials, but the video only had 21 and a half minutes of attempts. But that is exactly the question at hand. What about those other 38 and a half minutes? That is the goal of today's video, analyzing what else happened during that hour I played Trials for, resulting in only 36.3% of my time being spent playing the game. In the event of any further Trials changes, I would want such a time percentage to be increased increased, and we'll talk about potential solutions for that as well. If you guys enjoy this one, then drop a like for me and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Yes, I'm looking at you, person who has watched hours of my videos and not subscribed. It's free for you to do, it helps me out, and I would greatly appreciate you. Let's begin, and what you see on your screen before you is what my video editor looks like after editing this hour of footage. Each of the video lines represent a phase of each of these trial runs. Let's go over what each of those phases are. At the top of video 6 is just miscellaneous time spent, much of it being time spent spent in the airship when readying up, with one exception to that. Video 5, the next one down, is the arrival phase. This is from when I hit the ready button until just before I am able to move my character. Video 4 is the preparation phase, being from when I am able to move my character until I touch the vent that sends me into the arena. This is when you drink tonics and the other things you might do before fighting. Video 3 is the battle phase. This is the actual combat portion from when I touch the vent until either I or the behemoth registers 0 HP. And this was the footage from the video on the 18th. And below that, video 2 is what I would call the end phase, being from the time that either I or the behemoth reached 0 HP until the time I hit the retry button. And video 1, the bottom of the editor, is the loading phase. These clips are from the time that I hit the retry button until I was in the airship and able to ready up for the next hunt. The ending of these clips was the hardest part to judge, seeing as there is a small delay in which you aren't able to ready up even after the button appears. So I just kind of had to eyeball this part, generally being from sometime in the 109 second on the airship. All of these phases add up to roughly 59 minutes and 15 seconds of attempts, which is what will be used for calculating. Let's take a look at which phases were the longest. The battle phase is, thankfully, the longest of any of these, coming in at 21, 31, and 36 out of 60 frames, being 36.33% of the playtime. However, we'll see later that not all this time is even spent properly, as a large portion of the 21 and a half minutes were still playing already dead runs. But we'll analyze the battle phase itself in more detail shortly. The second largest amount of time spent is in the preparation phase, being 10 minutes and 6 seconds, 17.05% of the playtime. This is because on the Embermain trial, Galvanized and the Frostwolf unique effect are playing a huge factor. Staying on the starting platform to build more shields is pretty important for getting a good start to the run, a 3% crit chance for each lantern hold you do. This is an extreme, as most trials don't have this much preparation on the platform, but it's important to address that these moments do happen. The more common an occurrence here being Adrenaline, dodging 5 to 11 times to start with the max damage bonus on the trial, Adrenaline being used on plenty of different trials. In a close third, we have the Loading Phase, for 9 minutes and 58 seconds, accounting for 16.84% of the playtime. My internet is pretty fast, it hasn't really been reliable at all lately, people on the Twitch can attest to that, but when it works, it is fast, so my longest loading phase was 36 seconds. This certainly isn't the worst case scenario and I'd say particularly when it comes to squad trials, these loading times can be much worse. But next would be the arrival phase, which added to 8 minutes and 47 seconds, or 14.84% of the playtime. This one is dependent on the total number of runs per hour, and is pretty much a multiple of the roughly 22 seconds from the time you hit ready until you can move. And rounding up the different phases would be the end phase, with 6 minutes and 40 seconds, accounting for 11.25% of the playtime. Again, this is from 0 HP on the player or behemoth, until hitting retry. Very little variance here, but the percentage again is dependent on the total number of runs. And then the main variation here will depend on whether you kill the behemoth or not, as killing the behemoth does get you out slightly faster. And then the remaining 3.5% or so of the playtime was the miscellaneous portion. 29 seconds where I wasn't paying attention on the airship, 1.5 minutes of changing the build, and 4.5 and seconds where I lost a run in the preparation phase. This was thanks to a delayed loading issue in which my Frostwolf unique effect just didn't trigger on my first lantern hold. This actually did happen twice throughout this hour, but I just continued the regular preparations the first time around. Technically, I should have just removed this whole run segment, but miscellaneous things do certainly happen. When playing Trials, that would cause you to waste time. So I believe everything here is worth including in my book. If you want to argue I shouldn't include the build changing time, changing a build once per hour isn't completely unrealistic. In fact, that's pretty low, even if you were to watch Cosplay do runs. He will often switch weapons and builds, I'd say to partially cure the boredom of the many resets he 
does. As for the not paying attention part, this is very realistic to happen more than it did. You know, you're checking your phone, some Discord servers for 30 seconds a minute at a time, and then you get into your run. And I only did this once in the hour, so I'd say it's not worth taking out. All things considered, this is a fairly reasonable typical hour of Dauntless Trial attempts for solos. However, we're going to have to dig a bit deeper, specifically in the battle phase. There comes a point in plenty of runs where you might consider the run to be dead, but you still finish it, because it would be faster than dying. Or you simply still continue the attempt even though it likely won't result in the best time for you. Let's go through each of the 23 runs and assess when I would call it dead and the cause of death. A note about the interrupt at the beginning, I pretty much never got the perfect one. Here's a perfect one from Cocky Panther. I did try to replicate that happening, but I just couldn't do it. So it must be a controller thing or something. That's obviously a joke. Hashtag blame anything but me. The first three runs died in the first three seconds. Two of them to delayed interrupts, making them impossible to hit. And the third died because I took damage before getting the interrupt. Run four was the best of the session with a 56 second finish. Main time loss being general hesitation when using Revenant. 48 seconds or so was absolutely doable on this attempt, but the execution was kind of flawed. Run five and six were impossible interrupts. And run seven was my first forgetful run, as in Embermain forgot how to do an interrupt in the first place. You might think this could be a good thing, but this is very detrimental. Interrupts give you damage from overpower and the behemoth going down is generally easier to do exactly what you want with it. So technically this run also dies only three seconds in, even though I finished this run with a time of 101. Run eight, impossible interrupt. Run nine, another forgetful run, which I again finished at 121. Run 10, an impossible interrupt, but yet again, I would finish this run in 112, even after just messing around for 30 seconds or so. Run 11, impossible interrupt. Run 12, forgetful run, finish 104. Run 13, impossible interrupt. Run 14 was finally an okay interrupt. However, my revenant's positioning was rather terrible throughout, so this ended in me dying over a minute in. Run 15, solid interrupt, but a late wound on the first leg and an early wound on the second leg. But this run dies to poor positioning next to a wall on an interrupt, making a head break come much later than desired. Finish 103. Run 16, finally a non-delayed interrupt, but it AFK'd for two seconds before doing it. I traded an interrupt at the end, died at 58 seconds. Run 17, early AFK interrupt, but bad gameplay in general kind of killed this run. Messing up combos, hitting wrong parts, Parts, opening my inventory menu at the end, you know how it be. Finish 118. Run 18, another delayed interrupt, but this ended up being the second best run, clocking in at 58 seconds. Run 19 wasn't an impossible interrupt, I just kind of missed it. Run 20 was the immediate reset run from the Frostwolf bug. Run 21, early AFK interrupt, but I kind of missed my second revenant, so rip. Run 22, forgetful run, and run 23, I missed the interrupt. So what does this analysis of the battle phase mean? Well, if we were to stack up all of the runs that died with within the first three seconds versus the runs where I actually had a chance to get a good time on, we'd have nearly 12 minutes of runs that died early where I just kept playing out of boredom or were practicing the strategy, and less than 10 minutes of actual quality attempts. Those 10 minutes consisted of seven runs, of which only about two had pretty much nothing go wrong aside from having an extra long run interrupt in them due to suboptimal part breaking on my part. But how in the world am I supposed to figure out the optimal part break timing if so few few of my runs are actually on pace to beat my best time. You might think these particular interrupted bugs affecting Embermain runs are unreasonable to apply to other trials as a whole, but you would be incorrect. Just replace these issues with Behemoth Move RNG. Razakiri, for example, you have a 50% chance of your run dying on the first attack, and another 50% chance or so to die on the second attack. Or perhaps on the Shrike trial, where you needed to do four or five interrupts throughout the run, but on each attempt, it can do another move instead. Those are again kind of extreme examples, but they do exist. Another thing not quite well portrayed by this hour of attempts but can really waste your time is crit RNG. You could finally have literally everything go smoothly in a run and do everything that you want to, but alas, your run is slower than you want simply because you didn't crit enough. Now at 67% crit chance plus pulse on pike, this might not be as big of an issue, but it is certainly felt on the other weapons. And I never got a perfectly executed run anyway, so crits still weren't yet an issue for me. But my fellow slayers, imagine a world where when I want to play trials, I get more than 35% gameplay. What potential improvements could the devs make and where should they make them to make trials a more enjoyable experience in any future trials update? While some of the modifier changes 
changes are certainly reducing the random elements involved, let's think bigger picture. The solutions I'm suggesting here aren't necessarily easy to code, but something that would be a strong solution to the problem area and increase the enjoyment of the trials experience in general. Which, if they want trials to be more worth doing, they should invest time in something like that. Looking back to the second largest amount of time spent was in the preparation stage. If you ask me, using your lantern hold a bunch on the platform it just downright sucks, and it shows by how long the preparation stage is. A normal preparation stage takes about 5 seconds, compare that to the 30 seconds we see here. Dodging for adrenaline is less boring, but still boring, and especially with endurance. Solution here, maybe you make it so you can't gain shields or lose stamina until the timer starts. This would effectively eliminate additional actions in the preparation phase and just limit you to taking tonics. While the timer on the trial would actually be slower without these actions, I'd say it's worth it to get more attempts in and actually be playing the game instead. Another large chunk of time is spent on the arrival animation. Now I get it, you guys worked hard on the arrival animation a few years ago, but I've spent probably tens, maybe even a hundred hours of my life looking at this thing. Some type of option in the settings to turn off the hunt arrival animations would be incredible. Again, from this hour of attempts, nearly 10 minutes could have been saved and instead been spent playing the game. But depending on what you would do with this last section, you wouldn't even have to do that, as the last major section is addressing loading times. This would be the hardest out of any of these things to eliminate, but would still be relatively achievable. My idea for this would be instead of one trials island on the map, there would actually be three or four being spaced very far apart. When you hit the retry button, it will teleport you to the arrival platform of the next island and reset the clock to zero. So a retry on island one would put you on island two, island two to island three, and so on. If the behemoth is still alive on island one, then while you are fighting the behemoth on the next island, you can run the kill command on that behemoth. Working within how kill credit works, there would need to be some sort of delay before that kill command, such that the kill command wouldn't give you credit for the kill. And then once you hit that last island, you go back to island one and you get to start over again. And when you complete the runs, only the best time gets saved in the end. None of these solutions to any of these problems are necessarily easy or even the best logistical solution, but they are potential solutions. And these problem areas should be addressed. After all, the point of playing a game should be to play the game and not just staring at loading screens, hunt arrivals, or your lantern gauge. If you guys think you have a better solution to one of these problems than what I've suggested, let me know down in the comments. And thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to drop a like for me and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. But that'll be it from me. I have been Trevor. I go by the Mr. Trails and I will catch you guys next time.